In the previous episode, we explored primitive data types, the fundamental building blocks of JavaScript that cannot be broken down further. We also learned about non-primitive types, also known as complex types, which can be composed of primitive types and even have the ability to include functions as properties. TypeScript, being a superset of JavaScript, expands upon these types with additional ones. In TypeScript, we have top types, also known as universal types, which can be assigned any value. These top types are any and unknown. Additionally, TypeScript 2.0 introduced the concept of a bottom type called never, representing values that can never occur. Alongside these types, we have the void type, which signifies the absence or lack of interest in a return type. Let's check out the flexibility of any and unknown, the practical applications of never, and the concept of emptiness with void. In this example, we have a log name function that takes a user parameter of type any. I will invoke this function with an object containing the required props object with a name property. As a result, my name will be logged to the console since it meets the expected object specification. However, since the user parameter has a type of any, it allows for any kind of input. Consequently, if I modify my input to exclude the props section, my code will crash as I have allowed for any possibility. The TypeScript team strongly advises against the use of the any type as it essentially disables type checking. It is primarily intended for gradually migrating an existing JavaScript code base to TypeScript. But what alternatives do we have? Let's turn our attention to the second top type called unknown. TypeScript 3.0 introduced a new top type called unknown as a type safe alternative to any. By changing the type of our user parameter to unknown, TypeScript enforces a need to narrow down the type through control flow based type analysis. We can achieve this by performing various checks on the user parameter. First, we verify if the type of the user parameter is an object. Since it can also be null, we need to include an existence check. Next, we check if the user object has a props property. If it does, we eliminate the possibility of it being null. Subsequently, we continue by checking if it also contains a name property. It's important to ensure that user props is indeed an object. Otherwise, TypeScript will show us error TS2638. Once all these checks are implemented, we can access the value of userprops.name in our console log function. Note that the name itself will still be of type unknown. To achieve complete type safety, we can further validate if this name is specifically of type string. Although our code won't log anything due to supplying an incompatible object, it no longer crashes. The control flow based narrowing mechanism protects us against improper usage. You may have encountered the unknown type when working with test code. In test files, there are situations where using a mock object instead of the real one is desired to test specific behavior. Type assertions are commonly employed for this purpose. TypeScript may sometimes reject these assertions if not all properties of the original object are explicitly typed out. One way to work around this issue is by first asserting the type to unknown, effectively removing type information from the variable. Afterwards, you can assign another type to the variable. Let's see how we can further enhance our project. Our goal is to receive a compiler error when we pass an argument to a function that doesn't match the expected type. To achieve this, we need to define the expected type using the type keyword and specify the properties for our user object. By replacing the unknown type with the specific user type, we eliminate the need for type guards. TypeScript will now show errors if we attempt to pass mismatched arguments. This approach ensures accurate type checking, enables code completion within the functions that use our defined type, and ultimately leads to a properly working application. Let's compare the three approaches we've just seen. With the any type, our application is at risk of crashing if unexpected values are passed. We also lack proper code completion for parameter properties and won't receive warnings for mismatched arguments. Unknown allows us to address many of these issues using type guards but we still don't achieve accurate type checking when passing arguments to functions. 
On the other hand, by using a custom type, we can solve all of these problems. Let's introduce the next candidate on our list, the never type. In TypeScript, the never type can be used to indicate that a specific condition is unreachable. For example, variables can be narrowed down to the never type due to conditions that are impossible to happen. However, no type can directly be assigned to never except for the never type itself. You might be wondering what the practical use cases are for the never type. Well, let me demonstrate how it can be helpful in finding unhandled cases in switch statements. In my example, there's a function called handle response that takes a response status of type stream status, which is a union of the literal string types online and offline. The switch statement inside the function has a default case where the never type is being used. In this case, the response status is narrowed down to the never type because all possible cases are already handled in the switch statement, making the default case unreachable. If we were to extend the union to include an idle state, we would encounter an error. This is because the response status in the default case would receive the value of idle, which is not assignable to the never type. To resolve this error, we would need to actively handle the idle case. This feature is incredibly useful as it ensures that we don't forget to handle new cases when new possibilities are added. To conclude our journey, let's take a closer look at the concept of void. In TypeScript, the void type is automatically inferred when a function doesn't have a return statement. While in regular JavaScript, undefined is used as the default return type, it is not equivalent to void in TypeScript. The distinction lies in the fact that void signifies that you are intentionally disregarding the return type of a function. To illustrate this, let's consider a practical example. In my example, the fetch user from server function is responsible for simulating the asynchronous process of fetching data. It takes a URL and a callback function as parameters. To mimic the asynchronous behavior, a timeout of 2000 milliseconds is used and then the callback is invoked with a stubbed user object. The user type is defined with props, and the callback type expects to receive a user object and to return undefined. There is also an add user arrow function expression that adds new users to a global users array. When we attempt to call the fetch user from server function with a URL and our add user function as the callback, an error occurs. This error is due to the fact that the add user function does not explicitly return undefined. Upon inspecting the implementation of addUser, we find that the array push method returns a number instead. Consequently, the implied return type of addUser becomes number instead of undefined. To resolve this issue, we can strictly adhere to the callback fn type by creating a block body for our callback function and returning undefined. While this fixes the issue, we can further optimize it considering that we never use the return type of the addUser function. Let's revert to the concise body syntax and define a return type of void instead of undefined. This accurately conveys that we are not interested in the return value of add user and addresses our initial problem. Besides the void type, there is also the void operator which is not limited to TypeScript but also exists in plain JavaScript. The void operator evaluates a given expression and returns undefined. This can be demonstrated in the following example where we use the void operator to turn the sum of 1 plus 2 into undefined. At first glance, this may not seem particularly useful, but let's consider the scenario of our adduser function. Using the shorthand braceless syntax posed a problem for us when working with the array push method. The array push method returned a number, which then became the return value of our adduser function. To prevent this unintended leakage of the return value, we can now use the void operator. Another common use case for the void operator is when dealing with promises. If you simply want to initiate a promise for its side effects and are not interested in handling its resolution, you can employ the void operator to bypass the need for handling the promise. Equipped with our freshly acquired knowledge, we are now ready to take on the next quiz round. How do top types and bottom types differ? What advantages does unknown offer over any? Why is it beneficial to create a custom type? What is assignable to never? What is the return type of functions that lack return statements? 
How does the void type differ from the void operator? Thank you for taking the quiz. You can find the code examples featuring void, any, unknown, never, and a custom type on GitHub. Feel free to take a look, and I'll see you in the next video.